I was uh, lucky to host two international retreats uh, near to Govardhan, in our Govardhan retreat center. And then we went into um, man-made heaven, uh, Dubai, where we had a, a large Kirtan event, uh, in which we were participating in, and a lot of AC. And I think that is what did uh, it to the voice. So, um, I, I hope that uh, we will, it, it will last and, and be with me. Mm. Good. Uh, I will speak a little bit about Vrindavan Dham and then guide you into a little meditation. Just there is one temple in Vrindavan where you enter and uh, see the beautiful altar and then when you return you sit at the steps and you chant this mantra, the Ram Mantra. And I always like to start with this uh, invocation because it creates such a good, 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 good atmosphere. So uh, let me just put uh, uh, a deep inhale, please. And now, and very deep in at these images and recognize us in these situations which were filmed. <laughs> we are reminded of a state of consciousness which had many facets. There was discovery, there was great happiness as you could see. There were moments of reflection and perhaps for many of us also moments where in some ways Vrindavan showed us something that we perhaps were not so aware of before. Mm -hmm. I remember the first day uh, going with these ships mm -hmm down the Jamuna and uh, first we sang but then we decided to be just a little silent and have so to say alone time with the experience maybe you remember and uh, I was sitting next to uh, your good self could, could you please tell your good name Damin, Damin, oh yes. And uh, afterwards, I think we, we bo both of us felt that the atmosphere had spoken to us. It had imprinted something in our consciousness. And we felt both elated, there was a deep feeling of peace, maybe of something like inner confidence that yes, we can go ahead in our spiritual life and cross over all obstacles. Um, we, we exchanged a little, we, we were not able to talk long, nor did we wish to talk so long because we wanted to be part of the whole group experience. But I remember distinctly that we felt the dam had had reflected back 
on us. It had done something to us. And perhaps this is the greatest benefit of Vindavan Dham. Something which is usually invisible shines through and reaches our heart. Mm -hmm. The most important things in our life are often invisible. Your breath is invisible. Your mind is invisible, Lila Shara. And the thoughts, love is invisible. It's not a pinkish fog, no. It's some, some energy, some an uplifting feeling. The soul is invisible and God is invisible. Mm. Yet, although we cannot touch these invisible treasures, if you so want, although we cannot see them even, we can't smell them also, they are ultimately what matters most. And in a place like Vindavan, a place of pilgrimage, these invisible things shine, so to say, through and reach our heart. One of my very good friends said, everywhere else the spiritual re reality seems to be covered with something like a thick day curtain, where not even a ray of sunlight comes through. It's a curtain which people have who want to sleep during the day because they have perhaps work in the night. No, the thick day curtain. That is how Maya, the material energy, works in all the places in which we uh, normally are. I have seen this curtain is especially thick in London and in Berlin also. The big towns where people are really struggling for their existence. Mm. Now, in a place like Vindavan Dam, there is not so much a covering of these invisible things. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> it's like a thin covering, you know, these, these thin, please help me, veils or curtains? How would you call them? They are made, mostly made of gazé whitish material, net what? Net a net curtain maybe, um, and there the sun is not blocked, that the sun can shine through the fabric and, and reach us. In Vindavan, it seems the curtain of Maya is not thick. Whatever little is there, is usually what we bring, our mood, our mood swings, our lamenting when, when the food is too spicy and the toilet is too often frequented by us, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, we all have these moments which Damin, Damin and myself had when we sat in the um, on the boat uh, at the banks of the, or in the, in the Yamuna, and when we felt the spirit of world was reaching us. So Vindavan has this effect that the spirit of world shines very uh, nicely through this thin covering and touches our heart. And perhaps that's the reason why people who have visited Vindavan and say, I don't know what it is, but I love Vindavan. It's, it's something which we all, I think, have experienced. Sometimes these may be only moments. I remember on my first journey to Vindavan, I was very young, and immature. I remember I was trying to get some food I'm accustomed to. Now in Vrindavan they serve 
Western cuisine, and they, they are very careful to not use these, these chili bombs in their food. Um, but when I first came, it was totally undigestible. And I, I remember I had been very disturbed by this. I was hungry and had dysentery and so on. Then I was always cheated by the rickshaw drivers. Then whenever I wanted to, <coughs> I needed a, a shirt, for instance, I couldn't communicate with the, with the shop owners and they didn't know English, I didn't know Hindi. Uh, I remember the culture shock uh, of my first visit of Vendavan. But even then, I had this moment where the spirit of reality, the invisible treasures, so to say, were shining through. It was after a whole day of trying to negotiate my culture shock, they finally sat on the banks of the Yamuna at Keshigat. I remember the sun was setting, some parrots were returning to their nests, they were coming over the river, there was this beautiful sound of bells, and temple bells, where the pious pilgrims were called to come to some ceremonies. And there was frustrated Sachinandan Swami sitting in the atmosphere. And all of a sudden, and I don't think it was because of the parrots who returned, and the temple bells and the sun which was setting, all of a sudden, something spiritual came through the curtain of my own discomfort and uh, reached me and I uh, was um, sparking my soul to uh, wonderful realizations and insights. And I remember sitting there for a few hours, just overwhelmed <coughs> by the sudden insights which which came and which I could clearly identify as gifts from another dimension. And this is what Vrindavan does. It gives you attraction to these invisible realities, the soul, God, divine love, etc. But Vrindavan does also something else. And I think it's good to reflect also on the second effect of the dam. It mirrors uh, to us or shows us the areas where we still might have to pay a little attention. In London we would say the areas where there is room for improvement. And I would like to tell you a little very, very insightful story about the Temple of 1000 Mirrors. Because Vrindavan acts like, sometimes like thousands of mirrors where you recognize something. Mm. Once there was a dog who heard about this temple of 1000 mirrors and he went searching for it. One fine day he entered a building and all of a sudden he saw 1000 dogs looking at him. This, um, he became anxious and afraid and then aggressive and lo and behold the 1000 dogs bared their teeth. Mm, uh, they looked at him with aggressive eyes and then started to yap and yelp and bark and everything else but dogs do. Oh my dear everyone, this one dog uh, was sure he would never ever return to that terrible place. There was another dog who also heard and then desired to go to the temple of 1000 mirrors. Finally, after a long search, he entered a place and he saw 1000 dogs looking at him. As he 
looked back, he saw these 1,000 dogs started to smile at him. Their tails began to show symptoms of joy and excitement by wagging back and forth. And boy, this uh, uh, second dog always craved and longed to find that place again where there were 1,000 friendly dogs. 1,000 enthusiastic, enlightened, enlightened is maybe too strong of a word, insightful dogs. <laughs> this is what Vindavan does. For some, it is, it is just too much. I remember I once received a delegation of German scholars from the University of Frankfurt in Vindavan. And, oh, they began to quarrel amongst themselves about certain details of temple worship, which they had seen and analyzed. You know, they were of the religious sciences that was their subject. <laughs> I remember one scholar, he, he came with a desperate expression to me and said, I have the runs, where do I go? And uh, I said, here's a ditch for you. Uh, that's the closest place where I know. So he went there. And when he was finished, one local came with a bottle of water. Now, the local expected him to wash his hands, but he thought it was a congratulation drink. Uh, and he started to, to, to bring the bottle of water to his lips. So, I couldn't make myself understood. I only remember I took a stone, I took all my aiming abilities and I threw it and I hit the bottle by, by the mercy of God so that uh, he couldn't drink that water which would have, would have rendered him a helpless victim of the tropical hospital. You know, because in that water there is every germ which you can f analyze in the tropical institute. <laughs> he looked at me with anger and I said, I explained to him my action was compassionate and he understood. <laughs> 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 uh, what I wanted to s illustrate with this group of German scholars, they were really not fit for a visit in Vindavan. And Vindavan mirrored back their what is the word here? Inequities? In yes. Please say the word again. Yeah, this word, yes. They had mirrored back their disqualification to enter spiritual life. Therefore, on one hand, Vindavan gives um, like uh, like the sun can ve very easily shine through a thin day curtain, um, that uh, divine presence, you so wish, or Krishna can very easily communicate with us um, uh, conditioned souls in Vrindavan Dham. But before this communication or during this communication takes place, uh, uh, we most probably will uh, uh, experience the mirror effect of the Dharma Dharma. We will most probably uh, find out where room for improvement is, is, is there. And both of these effects are equally wonderful, equally uh, desirable. So I can imagine that all of you have experienced the shine through effect where spiritual reality became uh, became known or seen by you and also the mirror aspect where you could maybe see oh here I'm too much uh, self-obsessed here I'm too proud here I'm thinking I'm the controller of everything. Here I am, I'm, you know, what is the English word? Here I'm a vanity queen 
our vanity, the king, and so on. And you might have seen this. And please greet both of these experiences and learn from them uh, their lessons. In Vindavan, uh, we received so many wonderful um, lessons. <coughs> I would like, before I come to my meditation, uh, to tell you about uh, something about the history of Vindavan. Have you seen these amazingly nicely carved sandstone buildings? Like there was this one place where I could see, you know, which we could see, it's called Kusum Sarova, where there are these beautiful temple <coughs> and you were sitting there there was also light they have this very uh, very tasteful for some kitschy uh, uh, way of putting light on the building mm -hmm. um, this was built by a king and uh, so there are many temples mostly and they are built out of red sand sandstone because in the old times only kings had Essex access to these quarries where the red sandstone could be gotten. And, uh, and uh, in this way Brindavan uh, became developed or was developed on some of the temples by, by really these pious kings who took shelter in the supreme monarch the su Supreme King. So there was this one, Mansing, um, not the Mansing who built the Temple of Ruba, but was one, another one, who had come with his minister, bah Bahadur Singh, um, uh, for uh, an outing in Vindavan. He had a palatial building and all the servants put the luggage uh, down in the first story, of her, in the veranda on the first, on the ground floor, you would say in England. And he, the king, was on this big corridor veranda on the uh, first or second floor. And uh, only his um, royal shawl, it was a beautiful shawl, was with him and he was sitting. There. All of a sudden, a monkey came and grabbed this royal shawl. It was a very precious shawl with, with golden embroideries. And it was a sign of his kingly position. So this monkey came, took the shawl, uh, jumped on the high tree and started before the king to rip the shawl in shreds and to tear the golden threads and totally destroy that on the shawl. But as the king watched this, tears came in his eyes and he started to softly say, Radhi Sham, Radhi Sham, Radhi Sham. So his Minister, this Bahadur Singh, saw this and he thought, Oh, Vindavan is not good for my master. He becomes so sentimental. He should uh, throw his sword into the heart of the monkey and get his shawl back or something. So, three days later, he decided to ask his master, the king, Man Singh, <laughs> um, my dear king, I'm so sorry that your precious shawl was ripped to shreds by this uncultured monkey. The king looked at him, uh, continued, and the, I was also observing that in your heart you didn't find the impetus to get the shawl back, or at least to punish this face, feisty monkey. King, okay. yes, 
So Bahadur continued, What went on in your mind? Because I also noticed that you were crying. He looked at him. He was silent for a moment, as if thinking, should he talk or should he be, or should he not talk? And then he said, I will tell you what went on. I could see that this monkey was Krishna in disguise who came to teach me a lesson. I had, Vinda, I had, I had entered Vindavan with the identification of being a king. But Vindavan is a place which you enter as a soul without false ego and false identifications. And Krishna in his mercy came in the form of the monkey and uh, showed me that uh, I was wrong by, um, by <coughs> <coughs> sorry, ripping my uh, shawl into shreds. So <coughs> here when Dharam was acting as a mirror, Krishna, or Krishna could have sent the monkey uh, and, and something became clear to the king, which was not so clear before. And the king greeted this uh, sign, the sign from beyond this time, the sign from above, and he corrected what needed correction. In uh, Vrindavan, these two things are there. Gifts are given and mirrors are shown right into your face. Uh, and good. Mm. I said we should uh, aspire to enter Vindavan mm, as souls. Mm. Uh, I, I want to do a little meditation with you where I guide you into the experience of being a soul. And then if you so allow me, after the meditation, I will uh, take my, uh, my leave from you because tomorrow I have to rise at an inhuman time to catch a flight back to Berlin. Yeah, I have to by now uh, strain my brain to remember what are we going to Dubai, to Berlin, to Helsinki. Uh, where is the next destination? So it's Berlin. Okay, are you, is this a good idea? We should. Good. Uh, we will do Bastika Pranayam. That's good for your heart, your circulation, your complexion, your digestion, your attitude towards life. Good. So take, your, make fists and on an inhale, bring them up and spread the hands and then exhale bring them down while look at my hands clenching them in this way over the thumb oh so good Bastika Paranayam everyone this is what you need in London Can you feel the energy pattern changing in your body and brain? No, yes, yes. good. Yes. If there is some healthy sweat that is desired, we will do five more. you. Those of you who are ladies, please put your right hand on your belly, sli slightly under the belly button and the left hand on it. 
Those of you who are men, please take your left hand and place it under the navel. It's called also navel, and your right hand on top. <coughs> and uh, come down. Means come down. Uh, become calm in your mind by breathing gently in and out. Whenever you inhale, tell yourself, slow. And whenever you exhale, tell yourself, deep. We will do a very quick body scan. Bring your attention down to your feet. And move the attention to the knees and your sitting bones. And relax. Bring your attention to your lower and upper back. Relax your chest and your belly. Relax the shoulders, upper and lower arms, palms. Relax. Back of the neck, back of the head, forehead, relax. The facial muscles, relax. Now try to breathe in and out through the heart. On an inhale, you inhale into the heart area. And on an exhale, you relax a little bit more. It is in the heart where you ex exist. The self and where there is a divine presence which you could call Krishna or God. It's only through some mistake that we identify with this rose. But ask yourself, who am I when everything <coughs> that is not me is gone? Your job gone. Relationships for a moment gone. Your future plans gone. And it's with this self, the soul, the pure soul. 
that we can try to make contact with the Lord in the heart. We will do so now by singing a very simple song, Radha Govinda Radhi. Try to sing from that space and something very nice will be given.
Just uh, Radhika Ranjan, uh, you sing so nicely. No, did, do you also notice? Mm -hmm. uh, you can somehow move into this sacred space. And let me end my little observations mm -hmm. by perhaps suggesting some takeaways from your pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. A pilgrim who comes home has to now do the most important work. Mm. You could say during the pilgrimage he uh, develops or he collects treasures like uh, spiritual insights and perhaps also due to the mirror effect he can see where he needs to work. So now then he returns back to England or to the place from where he started his, his journey. It is good if he can incorporate or apply or just use some of the insights in his daily life. I must tell you, uh, this is for me always the most important part. I call it uh, India journey part two <laughs> or pilgrimage part two. Mm. What it needs is that you have this moment of reflection and I believe Radhika Ranjan will guide you into this a little later and then you discuss, eat and discuss. Mm. If you can discuss what went on for you, what, where are the realizations that uh, uh, st struck you. Uh, you can also think, where was the place where I stumbled? Because most probably, if you dig a little bit deep there, you will find a treasure. Uh, so then you take these insights and to build your life on, on or some of your life on it. I can only say for myself, uh, this pilgrimage, uh, this year's pilgrimage uh, was uh, very, very special. Perhaps you know I'm uh, retiring from everything when I go to India and uh, lock myself up in a little house made, made with one meter thick walls. It's uh, Ajahn Kutia where I can, where I'm also not visited by others. Uh, it's my secret launch pad, so to say. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, uh, yeah, this year was a year of deep insights. I even felt sometimes the curtain was drawn entirely. There was not even a thin day curtain. And, uh, mm, I know now, when I return tomorrow, when, when, when everything works, when the airplanes fly, then I will uh, sit a little, not necessarily sit, I will walk and I will reflect on these things. I know a few, three points and I will see how I can mm, schedule uh, them in. I see the next year like a blank 
piece of paper and I will see that inside this uh, paper, this get, I will write down the ideal life after Vindavan. That means I will, uh, for instance, I want to do a retreat on transformation in the desert of Jordan. That is something which I take from Vindavan, where I learned some deep insights of going deeper, 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 deeper. And I want to teach some of it in, in Jordan. But before I go to Jordan, which will be at the end of this 2023, before that I will practice and uh, uh, on this insight how to go deeper and transform my, my mind and life. And I will give it a good subst substantial part of my life. Mm. Mm. Because I'm responsible for a few projects and this and that, I will combine it with my responsibilities, but I will also reserve time for this. And in this way, Vindavan uh, 2022 is not lost for me, but becomes the fundament of an exciting new phase in my life. So something similar like this, I highly recommend to you. Maybe you will take time. I, I can imagine that this is in the plan where you talk to each other a little later and see what what went on for you, what you learned. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And uh, you reflect with others back and forth and get some ideas. But needless to say, I'm so or so impressed by the quality of all of you, how, how sincere you were. I saw you on the first day. You were a very, um, very, um, yeah, interesting um, combination of people the, the, from all different types of walks. One of you looked like a Viking and that was very dear to my heart because my forefathers come from that direction. And uh, yeah, there were many, many, many very wonderful people. And I, I even know that two of you stayed, uh, uh, Andre and Andro. Or, or Andre. Andre. Yeah? Andre and Andre. Yeah, they are continuing their <laughs> adventures in India. Uh, so I was highly impressed by the group and I really uh, want to suggest that with some amount of affection, please do this reflection, isolate the points which, uh, which struck for you and then, then move on in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let Vindavan be a launch pad for you also, uh, which helps your uh, life to come on a new trajectory that is a little bit more enlightened, inspired, inspiring, perhaps. Good. Having said this, I better stop talking now because tomorrow I <coughs> somehow I don't know how mm, there will be a little concert. Don't know if it will come. If 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 it doesn't work with me, I will ask the Krishna to do the concert. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> All right then. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, what do we say? We can all collectively express our gratitude in our own way by perhaps folding our palms together and. Uh, you have your. You can have just a few moments in just silence. I, I like silence too just to appreciate and maybe also uh, reflect upon the impending reflection. Mm -hmm.